story to tell. When it first appeared in the Second World War, the concept of carrier-based aircraft proved its excellent combat capabilities and immediately became the decisive force in the naval battles. Today, an aircraft carrier serves as a deployment and retriever of aircraft. It also acts as an airbase at sea. In terms of the number of carriers and its aircraft, the leading position is the United States. Their most famous aircraft, the short takeoff and vertical landing F-35B. Little remembered, however, that the Soviet Union developed these own jump jets and equipped them on its first aircraft carriers, the Jaglev Yak-30. Although a design ahead of its time, the limitations of VTOL jet technology and the disintegration of the Soviet Union ended the fate of these warplanes. It has long been believed that the primary weapon of an aircraft carrier is aviation. In the early 1970s, in service of Kiev class heavy aircraft cruiser Project 1143, the Jaglev Design Bureau developed a carrier based fighter, Yark 38, the first vertical takeoff and landing aircraft in the Soviet Union. A total of 231 units were built and officially decommissioned in 1991 after the fall of the Soviet Empire and its throne was not taken over by another product. It should be remembered that VTOL technology has been tested by the Soviet Union since the 1950s with a bizarre test rig called the Turbolet, followed by the Yark 36. The Yark 36 was a stepping stone to the carrier-based Yark 38. The Yark 38, NATO codename Forger, first flew in 1971 and entered service in 1976. At first glance, the Yark 38's design was quite similar to the British Harrier jump jet, but it followed a completely different configuration. The single seat cockpit was located behind a short nose cone. Air intakes were located on either side of the fuselage. The rear area consists of a single vertical tail fin, and the horizontal planes were designed to be facing downwards. Jar 38 has the length of 16.37 meters, wingspan of 7.32 meters, height of 4.25 meters, empty weight of 7.4 tons, and maximum takeoff weight of 11.3 tons. The secret to the aircraft's unique VTOL feature was in the two dedicated RT-38 leaf jets behind the cockpit. In addition to a single RT-28 vector thrust turbofan engine, the two smaller and less powerful engines used purely for takeoff and landing. The additional jets resulted in higher fuel consumption. The Jark 38 can reach a top speed of 1,280 km per hour, a range of 1,300 km, a service ceiling of 11,000 m, and rate of climb of 75 m per second. The Jark 38 possesses an automatic ejection seat. If one of the takeoff engines failed or the aircraft rolled, past 60 degrees, the pilot was automatically ejected from the aircraft.
The job 30 square band lot was quite limited. It only had four hard points, two under each wing, allowing a total of two tons of weapons of all kinds. Its air-to-air -air armament was confined to small R-60 heat-seeking missiles with a maximum range of 8 km, as well as optional 23mm cannon pods. For ground attack, the Jork 38 had bombs or unguided rockets. The Forger could also launch KH-23 anti-ship missiles with a range of a few kilometers. But the Forger's pilot would have had a difficult time controlling the manual guided weapons without a backseater. The Jark 30's weakness was that it had no radar, which limiting its potential as a fleet defense fighter, allowing it to conduct aerial combat at very close range. The Jark 38 was also known for its high accident rate, partly due to its small wings and poor balance in the air. The complicated controls make it more accident-prone than regular fighters. Of the more than 200, about 50 were lost in the crash. In addition, the Forger's engine struggled under high temperature conditions. The heat from the leaf engines rapidly damaged takeoff surfaces and kicked up tremendous dust that clogged engine intakes. Basically, the design of the carrier-based Yarklev Jark 38 fighter jets was extremely ahead of its time, especially when the aircraft was introduced in the early 1970s of the last century, when the 3D vector engines was not appeared. However, its VTOL technology limitations resulting in its limited rings and weapon payload. It could not compete with rivals such as the F-14 Tomcat with twice the speed and longer range weapons. In fact, Forger's limited capabilities were due to its being a transitional aircraft aimed at giving the Soviet Navy experience in operating carrier-based fighters, where it developed a more capable supersonic VTOL fighter, the Jark 141. Unfortunately, after the dissolution of the Soviet Union, the Russian Navy successor was no longer interested in VTOLs to squid to conventional fighters that could be operated from the newer Kuznetsov-class aircraft carriers. Financial difficulties also caused the end of the Russian VTOL projects. Even so, the design of the Jark 38 as well as the Jark 141 influenced Lockheed's design for the F-35B Joyce Tri Fighter with a vector tail pipe arrangement similar to the Jark 141. My video of Jark 38 ends here. Thank you for watching. If you find this video interesting, please give me your thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to support the channel. Goodbye and see you again in the next videos.